Hey you guys, welcome back to Angel Angela and on this topic you guys, I wanted to talk to you guys about fake Christians. Um you know, I don't even like using that terminology to describe someone for being fake or just being blind, just being blind, not having eyes to see that how they are treating people and how they're behaving is anything it's anything but godly and you know I was just really thinking about it and you know I wanted to share with you guys you know my experience you know with narcissists and fake Christianity so one thing about me that I've, you know, told you guys time and time again is that I grew up in a very religious family. Eventually, you know, I came into my own self. Eventually, I started to grow apart from my beliefs because I felt like I needed proof or I needed um, more understanding to what I was studying or what I was learning. I needed to know the whys of everything. So um, the moment that I started to ask why this, why that, things were just not clicking in my head. You know, um, everything, you know, just seemed like tradition to me. Also, another thing that always made me question, you know, my religion and things like that at the time was the fact that A lot of the things that, you know, people preach, they don't live by those things. And I know that we're not perfect, right? I know that we're sinners and and things like that. But to me, it was like, you know, um, if you know you're a sinner and you know that you're not perfect, you know, don't sit there and point the finger at other people. Don't belittle other people. Um, And not only that, but be thankful for what you have. You know, and I realized a lot of people weren't thankful for what they had. Um, a lot of people weren't grateful. A lot of people try to act like their their children and their family is perfect, right? They they have this perfect Christian family, and everyone is, you know, um, everyone is basically like following the leader, you know, and. You, you know, they, they tend to act like their kids are perfect. And a lot of times their kids don't even appreciate um, what they're doing for them. You know, a lot of times their kids are just going along with it because they know that if they don't, um, they'll be targeted as, you know, a black sheep. They will be the target of that family. So, you know, what I what I noticed about christian families is that it's like a hierarchy and you know the more that you pretend to be a good person it's not even like they're really being a good person it's like the faker you are the more they admire you the more like psychotic that you are but you know how to like hold your composure together you know the more they worship you. It's like they know that deep down inside you're a sinner. You know, they they know that, you know, you don't live by these things. And yet everyone, you know, stays in this group, in this cycle. From my experience, from dealing with these type of people, you know, um, who act like they're they're real Christians, um, but they're not, you know, when when you're surrounded by people who act like they believe in God, you believe them, right? Because you why would why wouldn't you believe that someone really believes in God or the power of God, right? Why would you not believe that? You know, um especially when someone who is in the Christian community and they're um basically having someone in that family or something blackballed almost it's like you're being blackballed by this person like nothing that you do for this family nothing that you do um you know will satisfy them because they know that you're waking up they know that you don't really 
have faith in what they're telling you. You know, they know that you have questions, you know, they know that even if you um, come back into that family and you pretend to um, really believe, they know that secretly you do not believe. They know that secretly you're not part of that group. They know that secretly um, you're being fake at this point. So this basically makes you wonder why is it that they can be fake, but I can't be fake? That's because they had already targeted you. They targeted you before you even had woken up. They're just watching you wake up. The thing about Christians is that once they have already targeted someone in the family, even if you're a young kid, they feel as if by the time you wake up, no one's going to believe you because they've already made themselves seem like good people. This is what my experience personally, what I noticed was that they would invest their time in other people to make themselves look good in the community. You know, people will come to them because they look up to them as leaders, right? And, you know, they're looking up you, they're looking up to them for advice. So what the narcissists in the Christian communities do is they give people bad advice. They tell people to do things that they will never do. Say you've never really had a, a problem in your relationship. And, you know, um, say this person has been supporting you. You know, they pay all the bills. They, they're, a, they're a very supportive person. But all of a sudden, you're going through a bad, you know, this bad stage in your um relationship, right? And this isn't saying you're dealing with a narcissist person, you could just be dealing through, you know, things in your marriage, right? If you go to a narcissist, they're going to find ways to make it seem worse than what it is. And not only that, they're going to give you bad advice. And then when things get worse, right, this could be anything. They're just going to give you bad advice. When things get worse in your life or something just, it seems like, you know, there's this domino effect. If you go up to a Christian, you know, a, a, a household that pretends to be perfect, right? All of a sudden, they don't want nothing to do with you. All of a sudden, um, they don't respect you. All of a sudden, they're ignoring your cause. And the confusing part about that is that you don't even see it coming. It's like you go from going to someone that's preaching to you, that's being nice to you, that's giving you advice. When things start going wrong, they disappear because they know that they were the cause of it and they're afraid that you're going to call them out on what they've told you, the, the, the advice that they gave you. They don't want anything to do with it. Yet, you know, they needed you in order to make themselves look good to other people. So that's usually what a fake Christian will do. So one thing is them just changing on you. The next thing is, you know, they changed on you because they gave you bad, advi bad advice. They think that you're going to react to them. So the next step is they're going to bash you to everyone at the ministries that you, you attend, basically. So this is why it's important to understand that not just just because someone knows information about narcissism and they're Christian, it does not make them a good person, you know. Narcissists in the Christian community are the type of people that um, you know, women and men, they'll flirt with you. Um, they'll cross boundaries with you. And if you don't go along with what they're doing or go along with the flirtation, then they'll find reasons for people to hate you. It's kind of like a, a narcissist at a job that's flirting with their with their employees. You know what they will do is they'll keep you around. Right. But they'll only keep you around to boss you around. And if they boss you around, that means that, you know, they'll end up doing something to make it seem like they care about you. Maybe they invite you to dinner. Maybe they, they tell you to come over and have coffee with them in the morning. But what they would do is they will start gossiping, you know, or they'll start talking about certain people or they'll try to get information out of you they'll see if you have any information on other people in that christian community and if you if you let this person know anything they'll go back around with other people and they'll tell other
other people, hey, don't tell anybody I'm telling you this, but this person said this, this, and this, you know, or they'll, they'll try to sabotage you with other people. This is what I've seen personally, you know, in, in my family, um, where maybe they even go out into different communities that are really poor. They go out there, they preach, they invite people to their church. Um, they invest a lot of time in these families to make it seem as if they're there to counsel you. They want you to do better. They want to bring you closer to God. And what I will say about a lot of narcissistic Christian communities is that they do bring you closer to God in a sense, right? Because I always think to myself, even if my family disowned me because I, I was asking too many questions, right? I, was, I wasn't I was um, falling for everything that I was being told. So even if they disowned me in some type of way, a part of me is still thankful that I got to know who God was, even if one day I realized that these people around me don't have God in their heart. It was like, just like the devil uses people, God uses people, right? So the devil is, is attacking you through these people, but then you'll have moments and those moments will make you believe that these people aren't evil, but that's just God, you know, using people, using the people around you to get to you. So I do believe that everything that you go through um, when you leave a narcissist relationship or narcissist family, it's basically to teach you a lesson or to bring you closer to a higher power. And I do believe that because what happens a lot, especially in my case, when I started to see how they treated strangers, like um, how they talked about them or how they wished bad on them or how, um, you know, they pretended to care about people. But in actuality, it was like they were getting off on their pain pain and then they were running to the pastor they were running to people in high positions and telling them everything that was going on and you know they have to let people know um around them to tell someone who's in position what they've done for them and if you don't tell the person that's in position what they've done for you then they'll take it upon themselves to gossip about you to these people, but then at the same time, make it seem like they're trying to help you. So it can look like they're trying to genuinely help you from the bottom of their heart. You know, um, it's like um, very sick to me, you know, because I, I've seen, you know, people from my family, you know, from my family literally do this to lots of different people. And then at the end, you know, when these people don't come around anymore and you're questioning kind of like what happened to them or why did that person get upset at you? You know, they'll start crying. They'll start playing the victim. They'll try to get everyone at the church to literally disown you. But the one thing, the one thing that that fake narcissist Christian cannot do is give you the full story. If you really pay attention, they won't give you the full story. And then they'll even tell you they don't want to talk about it because they're not negative And it's not godlike to talk about people like that. So they won't tell you the story. And then they'll use God to excuse their actions. Um, I've seen, you know, I don't know if I shared with you guys this story, but there was this dude from church that used to come to church. Well, he used to work at the church and he had a lot of seizures. And my grandmother owned a lot of little properties and she basically offered him, you know, one of her properties to stay because, you know, um, he was looking to relocate. And, you know, she, my grandmother is one of those people that she basically only rents rents her properties out to people that go to her church, people who are connected to her, basically. Um, people that she almost feels like she can have on a leash because she feels like if you don't pay your rent on time or you do something that basically I don't approve of, I'm going to bash you to the church. So I've seen her get sued by people. 
And then, you know, those people stop going to church for a while and then they start going to church again. And, you know, they're looking at that person weird, like, how dare you come to church? But they know that they provoke that person. You know, I've seen um, that dude that moved in to one of her places and he used to have like really bad seizures to the point where um, the seizures got worse and the church ended up telling him, you know, hey, you know, you you can't basically work for the church anymore. You can still come to church, but you just can't do certain things that you used to do because you have seizures and it could be a liability for the church because it was times where he would hit his head on the marble floor and things like that. So basically when they told him he couldn't work for the church anymore, that's when my grandmother basically turned on him and um you know, she basically one day saw that his house wasn't really clean and she took it upon herself to basically move him out of his house and um, the, um, her daughters, which are my aunts, basically took information like his social security card all of his private information because they knew he didn't have family so that's another thing if the narcissist they know you don't have family or or you're going to a a church and they know that you don't have family they'll take advantage of that that's another thing um about fake christians you know they know you don't have family and people close to you they're going to use that for their advantage they're going to come and you know act like mommy dearest they're going to come and they're going to act like your best friend, like a mother figure, like a father figure, you know, um, like someone willing to help you, you know. Um, but really, you know, they basically want to use you um, because they feel as if, hey, if I show this person some type of affection, even if it's a little bit, that's how I'm going to win them over to do whatever I want them to do for me because they they're yearning for love you know what i'm saying um so that's what i i realized is that you know that's the type of people they were they took that person's information um relocated him away like far 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 away from where we lived and you know we never saw that dude again at church or anything like that um it was a time where this lady um that basically was coming to my grandmother's church and she also lived near my grandmother's house they kind of became close and you know this lady um she wasn't from this country and you know she she didn't speak english and things like that so what my grandmother did is she took advantage of that situation she knew that um this woman was sheltered a lot you know and my grandmother basically was telling her that she couldn't live with her husband because her husband doesn't go to the church and her husband doesn't want to get married through the church so basically she's committing sin you know because she's not married through the church so she's committing sin and my grandmother is basically always making her feel guilty so this lady comes over she feels like she has a motherly figure a mother figure and she's basically pouring out her heart pouring out her feelings her emotions you know my grandmother's bossing her around she's thinking she's doing something kind for an older person right she's thinking you know this is a sweet old lady and the whole time you know she's putting my grandmother's putting things in her head you know putting her in a situation where you know, if she leaves her husband, she doesn't know the language. She's not from here. She's not from this country. Um, you know, and she's never worked to where she knows how to pay bills, doesn't have any credentials or anything. So you're basically telling her to you're telling her to leave her husband. And, you know, when her husband is at the point where he's like, if you want to go out in the real world, you can go out in the real world. But I don't know. I'm trying to help you at the end of the day, you know, as her husband, he's still trying to help her because she can't survive out on her own, you know. But what my grandmother did was she basically told her and basically you can come live with me. I'll pay you money to take care of me. 
um, you know, you can always eat here and we can go to church, you know, we can go to church or whatever. And basically making it seem like she's giving her a plan. Right. But the thing about my grandmother is that she's the type of person to say she's going to help you. But after a while, she'll get tired of you or she'll start gossiping about you to other people. And then other people will make you feel uncomfortable, you know, um, because they have a perception of you based on what she has said about you. Um, So basically, something happened and my grandmother never wanted to tell me what happened. But what I do remember is that that lady never came to visit my grandmother again. When I would ask my grandmother about her, um, she basically told me she went crazy that the last time um, she reached out to her husband. So now you're telling her to leave her husband, but now you're reaching out to her husband to get information. And And her husband basically told her that she had been in a uh, 5150, which is, if you guys don't know, it's a three day hold at a mental hospital. So I guess she had like a nervous breakdown, you know, just because you have a nervous breakdown, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've, you, you're crazy, right? Sometimes people have nervous breakdowns and, um, they recover from that, you know, but basically, she made it seem like because she had a nervous breakdown, all of a sudden she isn't who she's always been. Like all of a sudden, everything that this lady has done for her, you know, all of their conversations, it doesn't mean anything because she had a nervous breakdown. She literally said, you know, the lady went crazy, almost like saying, once you go crazy, you'll never be back the same. She's too weak. It's almost like she was saying, like, she's too weak. So a lot of times what, you know, fake Christians who are basically narcissists want, they want control. They want a slave. They want you to give up your life. They want you to give up your any any anything that you have in your life that you care about people that you care about, any hobbies, anything that you're into, they want you to literally give yourself to them completely, go to sleep when they tell you to eat when they tell you to everything has to be done the way they want it to be done. Sometimes they won't even want you to have, you know, access to the internet. They don't want you to have access to to talk to people that love you. You know, they they make it seem like people do not care about you and everyone's the enemy and they're there to save you from yourself. So basically, if you come across these fake Christians, these type of people, um, they're only being nice to you, but they're going to expect you to be almost like a slave to them. You're either going to be a slave to them or you're going to be a flying monkey. And that's there's no in between. And basically, in exchange, what they're promising you, it's like they're making a deal with you. It's like, well, you know, if you if you do what we tell you to do, you'll have a family, you'll have somewhere to go or you'll have people to talk to about your problems, not even understanding that they have people in those groups that are watching you. They're watching your every move to report. Everything has to be reported. So another thing that you will notice about dealing with narcissists and fake Christians is that a lot of times like the leaders are like the master manipulators. And a lot of times, you know, the other people around them, um, sometimes the, 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 the sheep are actually more intelligent than the leaders, actually. And, you know, I know that as well to be a fact, because I'm thinking to myself, how could my family, right, including my grandmother, go to church for so many years. And one thing my grandmother confessed to me, she always said that, you know, she looked up to people who memorize Bible scriptures. She's like, I really look up to people that can memorize a Bible verse, right? And, you know, if you're dedicated to something and you've been going to church for nearly 70 years, you're not going to at least remember one Bible verse or a couple, you know, you know, you've been going to church for like 20, 30, 10 years, 50 years. 
How do you not memorize any Bible scriptures? You have to be one of the most down low, you know, you have to be one of the lowest type of narcissists at the church for you not to even remember anything, any scriptures. What do you read the Bible all day for? And why do you judge other people when they try to teach you something um, in the Bible that they learned or, you know, they're just trying to give you kind words of encouragement and you don't respect them just because they're not in high places yet you can't even remember a bible verse and that's how you can tell you're dealing with a narcissist because you have the narcissist that's really you know low down dirty will do anything to get on top you know they'll lie about their education their knowledge their experience everything and these type of people they'll get the position and they'll still not be ready they'll try to only use what they can remember what they got out of it but anything else that's important a lot of times they won't remember or they won't make the effort to remember because they already feel like they have the fame then you have those narcissists right those christian fake christian narcissists that they remember the bible verses and they're like master manipulators they know how to use the word of god against you and, you know, once they use the word of God against you, you know what they like to do after? They like to have potlucks. They like to have parties. You know what a Christ, fake Christians love the most? They love a good party. That's what they like the most, a good potluck. And it's kind of funny because it's like, you know, they'll talk about worldly people and worldly people, you know, going out and having parties and being around the wrong people. But they're doing it on a on a sophisticated level, you know, and then a lot of times, you know, they they come home and there's someone completely different. You know, they're, it's like they're mad that they're having to be fake Christians. So, you know, I just wanted to get on here and basically share my story, my life story, um, being with Christians, with fake Christians who are narcissists and, um, you know, understanding that these people are very, very dangerous people. They're very dangerous people. They will um, slander you. They will, you know, um, they will send their enablers um, for you. They'll um, control you with everything that they can. You know, they'll try to destroy the way others see you, you know, um, these type of people are constantly trying to seek revenge on you for the things that they've actually done to you just for letting them know it hurt you. The way they're they're treating people, you know, behind closed doors, it's it's not right, you know, and to them, it's like it's like a threat to them. It's like, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to go tell the church? What are you going to do about it? You know, no one's going to believe you. You know, because I have everyone wrapped around my finger. I've I've buttered everyone up already, you know. So um, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, um, you know, share your experiences with others. Um, leave your comments down below. Share this video if you guys care. And I'm sending you guys lots of love, lots of light. And I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Bye.